Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here, live at reInvent 2022. We're here at the Executive Summit upstairs with the Accenture set, three sets broadcasting live, four days with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, host, but two great guests. CUBE alumni is back. Tanuja Randeri, Managing Director, Amazon Web Service for Europe, Middle East, and Africa, known as EMEA. Welcome back to theCUBE. Great you. to see you. And Kartik Narin, who's the Accenture first cloud lead. Great to see you. Back again. Thank you. Thanks for coming back on. All right, so business transformation is all about digital transformation taken to its conclusion. When companies transform, they are now a digital business, technologies powering the value proposition, data, security, all in the keynotes, higher level services, industry specific solutions. The dynamics of the industry are changing radically in front of our eyes for, for the better. Kartik, what's your position on this as Accenture looks at this? We've covered all your successes during the pandemic with AWS. What, what do you guys see out there now as this next layer of power dynamics in the industry take place? I think cloud is getting interesting and um, I think there's a general trend towards specialization um, uh, that's happening uh, in the world of cloud. And uh, cloud is also moving from a general purpose technology backbone to providing specific industry capabilities uh, for every customer within various industries. But the industry um, cloud is not a new term. It has been used in the past and it's been used in the past in various degrees, whether that's building horizontal solutions, certain specialized SaaS software, or providing capabilities that are uh, horizontal for certain industries. But we see the evolution of industry cloud a little differently and a lot more dynamic, uh, which is we see this as a marketplace where ecosystem of capabilities are going to come together um, to interact with a common data platform, data backbone, data model, uh, with workflows that will come together and integrate all of this stuff and help clients reinvent their industry with newer capabilities, but at the same time, um, use the power of democratized innovation that's already there. Um, Within, within that industry. So that's the kind of change we are seeing um, where uh, customers in their strategy are going to implement industry cloud as one of the tenets as they go through their strategy. Yeah, and I see in my notes, fit for purpose is a buzzword. People are talking about right size in the cloud and then just building on that. And what's interesting, Sinj, I want to get your thoughts because in the US we're one country, so yeah, integrating is kind of within services. You have purview over countries and these regions, this global impact. This is now a global environment, so it's not just the US, North America, it's Latin America, it's EMEA, all your, this is another variable in the cross-connecting of these fit for purpose. What's your view of the, these industry specific solutions? Yeah, no, and thanks Karthik, because I'm 100% aligned. You know, I mean, you know this better than me, John, but 90% of workloads have not yet moved to the cloud. <laughs> and the only way that we think that's going to happen is by bringing together business and IT. So, what does that mean? It means starting with business use cases, whether that's digital banking or smart connected factories, or frankly, if it's predictive maintenance, or connected beds, but how do we take those use cases, leverage them to really drive outcomes with the technology behind them? I think that's the key unlock that we have to get to. And very specifically, and Adam talked about this a lot today, but data, data is the single unifier for all of business and IT coming together to drive value, right? However, the issue is there's a ton of it, <laughs> right? In fact, fun fact, if you put all the data that's going to be created over the next five years, which is more than the last 30 years, on a one terabyte, little floppy disk drive, remember those? Well that's going to be 15 round trips to the moon and back, <laughs> that's how much data it is. So our perspective is you got to unify yep. single data lake, you got to modernize with AI and ML, and then you're going to have to drive innovation on that. Now I'll give you one tiny example if I may, which I love. Ryanair, big airline, yep. 150 million passengers, they are also the largest supplier of ham and cheese sandwiches in the air. And catering at that scale is really difficult. Right? If you have too much, food wastage, sustainability issues. Too little, customers are really unhappy. So we work with them leveraging AWS Cloud and AIML to build a Panini predictor. And in essence, it's taking the data they've got, data we've got, and actually giving them the opportunity to have just the right number of paninis. I love the lock and the, and the key is data to unlock the value. We heard that in the keynote. Kartik, you guys have been working together with AWS and a lot of successes, we've covered some of those on theCUBE. As you look at these industry solutions, they're not the obvious big problems, they're like businesses. You know, it could be the pizza shop, it could be 
the dentist office, it could be any business, any industry specific carries over. What is the key to unlock it? Is it the data? Is it the solution? What's, the, what's, the, what's that key? I think, you know, the easier answer is all of the above. But like Tanuja said, it all starts by um, bringing the data together. And, and this is a funny thing, it's not creating new data. This data is there within enterprises. Our clients have this data, the industries have the data. But for ages, these data has been trapped in functional silos and organizations have been doing analytics within those functions. It's about bringing the data together, whether that's a single data warehouse or a data mesh, those are architectural considerations, but it's about bringing cross-functional data together as step one. Step two is about utilizing the power of cloud for democratized innovation. It's no longer about one company trying to reinvent the wheel or create a, a new wheel within their enterprise. It's about looking around through the power of cloud marketplace to see if there's a solution that's already existing, can we use that? Mm -hmm. Or, if I've created something within my company, can I use that um, as a service for others to use? So, the number one thing is using the yeah. power of democratized <laughs> innovation. Yeah. Second thing is, how do you standardize um, and digitize functions that does not need to be reinvented every single time? So that, you know, your organization can do it, or you could use that or take that from elsewhere. And the third element is, using the power of the platform economy or platforms to come to find new avenues of revenue, opportunity, yes. customer engagement and experiences. So these are all the things that differentiates organization, but all of this is underpinned by a unified data model that helps yes. you know, use all the quiz in there. Tanuja, you, you were mentioned earlier that not everyone has their journey to the cloud, looks the same, and certainly in the US and EMEA, you have different countries and different areas. Yep. Their journeys are different. Some want speeds and feeds, some will roll their own. I mean, Databricks CEO, when I interviewed him there last week, they started Databricks on a credit card, swiped it, and they didn't want any support. Amazon's knocking on their door saying, you want support? No, we got it covered. Obviously, they're from Berkeley, and they're, they're nerds, and they're, they're cool. Um, they can roll their own, but not everyone can. Yeah. And so you have a mix of customer profiles. How do you view that, and what's your strategy? How do you get them over productive, seeing that business value. What's that transformation look like? Yeah, John, you're absolutely right. So you've got those who are born in cloud. They're very savvy, they know exactly what they need. However, what I do find increasingly, even with these digital native customers, is they're also starting to talk business use cases. So they're talking about, okay, how do I take my platform and build a whole bunch of new services on top of that platform? So we still have to work with them on this business use mm -hmm. case dimension for the next curve of growth that they want to drive. Currently, with the global macroeconomic factors, obviously they're yeah. also very concerned about profitability and cost, so mm -hmm. that's one model. In the enterprise space, you have differences, yeah. right? You have the sort of very, very, very savvy enterprises, right, who yeah. know exactly what they're looking for, but for them then, it's about how do I lean into sustainability? Yeah. In fact, we did a survey, and 77% of users that we surveyed said that they could accelerate their sustainability goals yep. by using cloud. So in many cases, they haven't cracked that and we can help them do that. So it's really about horses for courses yep. there. And then with some other companies, they've done a lot of the basic infrastructure yep. Uh, uh, modernization. However, what they haven't been able to yet do is figure out how they're going to actually become a tech company. So I keep getting asked, yeah. can I become a tech company? How yeah. do I do that, right? And then finally, there are companies which don't have the skills. So if I go to the SMB segment, yeah. they don't always have the skills or the resources. And there, using scalable market uh, platforms like AWS Marketplace yeah. allows them to get access to solutions without having to have all the capabilities. This is where so the partner really network is. really kind of comes in. Absolutely. Huge value, having that channel of solution providers. I use that term specifically because you're providing yeah. the solution for those folks. Yeah, and then fact, the folks, the enterprise, you, we had a quote on the analyst segment earlier on our cube, spend more, save more. Yeah. That's the cloud equations, because yeah. you're going to get it on sustainability, you're going to save it on that, you're going to save on cost recovery for revenue, time to revenue. So the cloud is the answer for a lot of enterprises out of the recession. Absolutely, and in fact, we need to lean in now. You heard Adam say this, right? Yeah. I mean, the, 
cost savings potential alone from on-prem to cloud is between 40 and 60%. <laughs> Just that, but I don't think that's it, John. The bell tightening it's, he said is, is you know, yeah. they rein in some right size, yeah. okay, but then also do more. He didn't say that, but we were, we, the analysts are generally saying, if you spend right on the cloud, you'll save more. That's yeah. a general thesis. Yeah. Um, do you agree with that? I, I absolutely think so, and by the way, usage is, People use it differently as they get smarter. We're constantly working with our customers, by the way, though, to continuously cost optimize. So you heard about our Graviton3 yeah. instances, for example. Yeah. We're using that to constantly optimize, but at the same time, what are the workloads that you haven't yet brought over to the <laughs> cloud? And so supply chain yeah. is a great idea. Our health cloud initiative, so we worked with Accenture on the uh, Accenture Health Insights platform, which runs on yeah. AWS, as an example, or the Goldman Sachs one last year, if you remember. I do. The financial cloud. So those, those are some yeah. of the things that I think make it easier for people to consume yeah. cloud and reimagine their businesses. It's funny, I was talking with Adam and we had a little debate about what an ISV is, and I talked to the CEO of Mongo, they don't see themselves on the ISV. As they grow up on cloud, they become platforms, they have their own ISVs, and Databricks and Snowflake and others are developing that dynamic but there's still ISVs out there. So there's a dynamic of growth going on and the need for partners, yeah. and our, our belief is that the ecosystem is going to start doubling in size, we believe, because of the demand for purpose-built or so out of the box, I hate to use that word out of the box, yeah. but you know, turnkey solutions, that you can buy another one if it breaks, but use the building blocks if you want to build the foundation that's more durable, more customizable, do that if you can. Well, but we've got a phenomenal, shall we talk about this? Yeah, go get yeah. So we built a five-year vision together, Accenture and us, um, which is called Velocity. And, and, and you'll be much, much better in describing it, but I'll give you the simple version of Velocity, which is taking AWS-powered industry solutions and bringing it to market faster, more repeatable, and at a lower cost. And so think about vertical solutions yep. sitting on a horizontal accelerator platform able to be deployed, making transformation less complex. Yeah. Kartik, weigh in on this because you, I've talked to you about this before. We've said years ago, the horizontal scalability of the cloud's a beautiful thing, but vertical is where the ML works great too. Now you got ML in all aspects of it. Horizontal vertical's yeah. here now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Again, the power of this kind of platform that we are launching, by the way, we're launching tomorrow, we are very excited about it, is well, What are you platform. launching tomorrow? Hold on, I got news out there? What's <laughs> launching? we are going to launch a giant platform which will going to help clients accelerate their journey to industry cloud. So that's going to happen uh, tomorrow. So what this platform would provide is that this is going to provide the horizontal capabilities um, that will help clients bootstrap their launch into cloud. And once they get into cloud, they would be able to build industry solutions on this. The way I imagine this is create the chassis Yep. that you need for your industry, and then yep. add the cartridges, industry cartridges, which are going to be solutions that are yep. going to be built on top of it. And we're going to do this across various yep. industries, starting from you know, healthcare life sciences to energy to um, you know, public services and so on. You're going to create a channel machine, channel creation machine. Yep. You're going to allow people to build their own solutions on top of yep. that platform. And that's launching tomorrow, make sure we get the news on that. Exactly. Uh, and no, Sorry, no. just, and we genuinely believe the, the power of industry cloud, if you think about it in the past, to create a solution, one had to be an ISV to create a solution. What cloud is providing for industry today in the concept of industry clouds is industry companies are creating industry solution. The best example is, um, along with you know, AWS and Accenture, Ecopetrol, which is a leader in the energy um, industry, has created a platform um, you know, called Water Intelligence and Management Platform, and through this platform, they are going, yeah. attacking the audacious goal of water sustainability, which is going to be a huge problem uh, for humanity that everybody needs to solve. As part of this platform, the goal is to reduce you know, fresh water um, usage by 66%, yeah. or zero, um, you know, um, uh, you know, impact to um, you know, groundwater uh, is going to be the goal or ambition of, of uh, Ecopetrol. So all of this is possible because 
industry players want to jump to the bandwagon because they have all the toolkit of, of the cloud that's available with which they could build a software platform yeah. with which they can power their entire industry. Yeah, and make money on have a good business. You guys are doing great. Final word, partnership, where's it go next? You're doing great. Put a plug in for the Accenture AWS partnership. Well, I mean, we have a phenomenal relationship and partnership, which is amazing. We really believe in the power of three, which is the GSI, the ISV, and us together. Um, and I have to go back to the thing I keep focused on, 90% of workloads not in cloud. I think together, we can enable those companies to come into the cloud, very importantly, start to innovate, launch new products, and refuel the economy, so I think, We'll have to very, check on very that optimistic. Number. We'll have to check on that number. That seems you check little, on that number. 90 seems a little bit, of maybe that workers. sounds, maybe, that, I'd be surprised, maybe a little bit lower than that, maybe, we'll see. We got to start that, turning it. It's still a lot. <laughs> it's still I mean, a lot. A exactly. lot more, still, yeah. first, still, still early days. Thanks so much for the conversation. Thank you. Karthik, great to see you again. Tanuja, thanks for your time. Thank you, Congratulations John. on your success. Thank okay, you. this is theCUBE up here in the Executive Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. We'll be right back more with more coverage here on the Accenture set after this short break. <laughs>